Hang on for the loop! Four, three, two, one. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. Oh. And I am currently winning with the score of... Maybe if we're quiet, we'll go away. Yeah, okay. Why is someone at the loop show door? Uh, probably because I put that new welcome mat out there. My welcome mat? It says, hey, y'all. I thought that our porch needed some pizzazz. Oh, Jamie, now all of our loop show neighbors are going to think that they can come by anytime they want. Well, it sounds like they're gone. Okay, I'll, I'll go let them in. Ricky, this is our neighbor, Danica. Oh, wait. Look at this. Hi, I saw your precious welcome mat from my studio next door and I just thought I'd stop by and give y'all a hey, y'all. Well, hey, y'all. Hey. hey. Yeah, it does have some pizzazz. Oh, my thoughts, exactly. So what do y'all do around here? Oh, we host something called The Loop Show. Get out. I'm a host. <gasps> no way. Yeah. I got a little show on the Home Zone Network called Dream Demo. <laughs> I mean, what's the best part of every renovation show? Uh, the reveal? No way, kitten whiskers. It's demo day. Everybody loves the part where you knock over an old fireplace or rip out an old kitchen. Yeah, so you focus more on the demo than you do the rebuild. Oh no, we don't even do a rebuild. Dream demo is strictly demolition. Our tagline is, every day is demo day. So you just tear places down and then walk away? Oh, well, no. <laughs> we do more than that. I mean, we film the whole thing, too. And then we walk away. Oh. When I first met Ricky and Jamie, I thought they were just delightful. Kind of like a pair of mismatched socks. A little mixed up. But as long as they smell good, they'll work. What is she doing? I think she's doing like a sidebar. What I didn't expect was the size of their space. But now that I've seen it, I've got some real good ideas on how to tear it all down. But uh, no. Oh, no, don't mm -mm. do that. Sharing kindness feels good. Nothing beats making someone smile or giving someone help they need or welcoming someone new. Agape is the Greek word for how we as followers of Jesus love everyone around us. Agape describes a serving kind of love that doesn't expect any repayment. It's ready for every opportunity to do some good. Agape love is the kind of love that goes above and beyond yourself to care for people around you, including people you don't even know yet. Whether you love socializing or like to be behind the scenes, how you love your neighbors matters to God. In your community, God calls you to put love first. As Paul told the Galatians, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. When you take every opportunity to show agape love to the people around you, you're sharing the unconditional love God shows to you. Hey Loop, if we haven't met yet, I'm Jason. And actually two of my boys, Roy and Paul, are in Loop. And if they're sitting next to you, they're like, hey, that's my dad. <laughs> and actually a lot like you, they are better than me at a lot of things. Um, skateboarding, for sure. Video games, uh, trampoline flips. I mean, that's not even happening. And putting hot dogs in the toaster. More on that a little bit later. And then being a neighbor. And it's not that I'm like bad at being a neighbor. I'm just not that good at it, you know? So several years ago, we'd moved into our new neighborhood and I'm out front trimming our tree with what feels like these little kindergarten scissors. And my neighbor down the street is like, hello, sir, would you like to use my gas powered and highly capable trimming machine? And I was like, nah, bro, I'm good with my scissors. So that was a while ago and I'm actually getting a little bit better at being a neighbor. And it's mostly from learning from Jesus and my boys, Roy and Paul, and the Apostle Paul, and my actual neighbors. And I'm learning to love my neighbors and welcome them the way that God loves and welcomes me. 
And how does God love and welcome me? It's the same way that he loves and welcomes you. It's with that agape love, that unstoppable love. And it's not stoppable because nothing really started it. It's who God is. It doesn't want anything in return because it doesn't need anything in return. And so how do I love my neighbors the way that God loves you and me? It's kind of like learning to do a flip on the trampoline. You just keep trying and practicing and you don't give up. <sighs> Jamie, you cannot let her destroy our studio. Why do I have to do something? Because you're going to put up the welcome mat. That's true. Is this load bearing wall? You know, hey, Danica, Ricky and I have been talking, and we really like the studio as it is. You sweet little peanut brittle. You haven't even seen what I planned for your dream demo. Okay. So here's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay. You ready for this? Mm -hmm. This place would be amazing if you took all of this and made this dream come <gasps> true. Oh, no, no, we cannot oh, no. do that. That does not work for us. I can have sledgehammers knocking out this concrete within the hour faster than you can say, let's stop for like two seconds and think about this. Danica, listen, we love breaking things just as much as you do, but we also really love this studio. We prefer it as like a functional studio instead of a pile of rocks. Of course you know better than me, you little neighbors. <laughs> Thank you. Ricky and Jamie do not know better than me. I'm an expert in destruction. Oh, we can hear you. Whatever it takes, I'm gonna rip this thing down to the studs for an agreed upon price of $58,000. $58,000, Jamie, do something! I'm fine. Okay, I have a couple more stories. And one of them includes Roy and Paul doing something you definitely shouldn't try at home, putting hot dogs in a toaster. <laughs> but first, something important that I think we should talk about because we're talking about loving our neighbors. What actually is a neighbor? A neighbor is any person whose life can be hurt or helped by you. So Ricky and Jamie are neighbors now and Danica is now a neighbor to them. A neighbor could be someone living in your apartment complex or someone living in your house or someone you go to school with or breathe the same air as. A neighbor could be someone you play video games online with. A neighbor could be living in another country and working in a factory making the clothes that you wear or the stuff that we buy. A neighbor could even be a sibling. And loving our neighbors, it's like not always easy, you know? I, actually, did you hear me just say a neighbor could be a sibling, <laughs> okay? But seriously, don't you think God knew that we would need neighbors and siblings and friends and all of these people so that we could learn to love the way that He loves with that unstoppable agape love? And if you're a human like Roy and Paul or me, and that's not always easy for you, then don't give up. Remember what the Apostle Paul said to us in Galatians 6, 9 and 10. He says, so let's not get tired of doing what's good. At just the right time, we're gonna reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone especially those in the family of faith. I like how the Apostle Paul is like, do good to everyone whenever, but also especially those people close to you. You know, it could be a little brother or stepsister or neighbor, and it could be the person sitting next to you. Don't forget them. Okay, I promise I'm gonna be right back and I'm gonna tell you that story about the hot dogs in the toaster. Okay, so this is Turtle. He likes being scratched behind the ears. And then uh, over here, we have our Funko Pops and our cartoon that Ricky drew of us. And then we have this jar of pigs that I used in a challenge. So you can see we have lots of memories that we've made here. Yeah, and, and you're a guest. I mean, how would you like it if we went over to your studio and made you eat meat cake? Is that a thing you do around here? Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. we do a yeah. lot of challenges here. Yeah, we were playing table darts before you got here. Table darts? What, what's table darts? Oh well, yeah, it's, it's a game where you take these darts and you throw them on the table and try to get them to stick. Yeah, you get a point for making them stick, but then you get three points 
for whoever gets it closest to that anchor right there. Yeah, and it's 10 points if you land it on the anchor, but it's super difficult. Well, I, I bet I can do it. Swinging a sledgehammer has increased my dexterity. Oh, we'll give it a shot. First to 10 wins. Okay. You go first. Oh, yes. good job. That's one point. I got keep, it. Keep going. Right. Oof. There we go. Oof. Come on, stick it. Ooh. Oh, oh, my goodness. That was close. Oh. Wow. Neighbors. Oh. Neighbors. That was awesome. Oh. Oh. Go, Danica, go. Oh. Very good. Got this. Nice. Okay. Made the table. Very good. Okay. Oh, All right. Wait, oh, yet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, oh. my goodness. What just happened there? You got this. Oh, gosh. Oh, I did that. Oh, that was like on it. Oh, oh man. No so points close. for Jamie. All right. So you got three because you're this is closest. Yeah. And then three, four. So you have four this round and I have two. Okay. First to 10. Very good. <laughs> oh. Very good. So close. That was. Oh, good okay. job. Okay. This, this is the one. Oh, oh I see. That I tried a good. different tactic there. You I did the did. overhand. Ooh, oh, goodness. Nice, Jamie. Oh. Ah, you can do it. Yay! Oh, well oh yeah, who's okay. Who's the closest? Eight and a half. All right. On this one? It's a nail biter. It's more like nine ah, on this one. Good job, Danica. Well done. And I had four. And I had six before, so that's <gasps> ten. Yay! Oh, oh, congratulations! congratulations! Now, I'd like to point out, we couldn't have played table darts if we didn't have a table or a room. So. Yes, as long as we have our studio, we have a place where we can invite people over to eat and hang out and play games. Which I'd also like to mention we can't do without the studio, so. <laughs> Coming in clean, Lima Bean. I hear what you're saying. Ricky and Jamie are welcoming with their space and generous with their time. And as much as I would love to see what this place would look like if it were just a crater, I think I'm gonna leave this one alone. <laughs> okay, I have two stories. One about an unexpected toaster in my driveway and the other about an unexpected traveler on a dusty road. So we're playing bingo at a birthday party for my former boss. When Roy wins, he gets a toaster as a prize, but it's not just any toaster. This thing has slots for hot dogs and hot dog buns. And there's definitely more to that story. But first, let me start the story of the unexpected traveler on the dusty road. So there's two friends and they've traveled a long way. They've walked to see their hero do something amazing, but instead it goes terribly wrong. They had traveled to see Jesus come into town, and they probably thought that Jesus was going to like overthrow the government and make their lives easier. But instead, Jesus gives his life on the cross. And so they're walking home on this dusty road, really disappointed. And this unexpected traveler comes up from behind them. And he's like, hey, uh, what are you guys talking about? I mean, can you imagine feeling that disappointed and then some random person wants to know what you're talking about? Okay, back to the toaster in my driveway. Roy and Paul convinced me to buy a lot of hot dogs and hot dog buns. They set up a hot dog stand in our driveway with this excellent sign. It says, Roy's Poppin' Dogs. And they sit there for hours and they don't sell one hot dog. Back to the travelers on the dusty road. These two friends seem kind of frustrated with the question. They're like, what do you mean, what are we talking about? Don't you know what happened? We had these high hopes and they killed Jesus. And then the unexpected traveler or neighbor sets them straight. He explains, the story's not over. All this stuff, it, it had to happen. And he helps them to understand their faith and their version of the Bible like they'd never seen it before. Meanwhile, back in my driveway, Roy and Paul, they didn't sell any hot dogs because they gave them all away to my neighbors, including the neighbor friend who offered me the gas-powered trimmer like eight years ago, because agape love does that. It offers what it has. What do you have? Okay, back to the dusty road. 
the unexpected traveler, he's about to part ways from the other two. And they invite him in, they still don't know who he is, to come to their home in their town and sit at their table and to have some food. So they sit down at the table. The unexpected traveler takes the bread and breaks it. And when the two friends look up, they realize that they're not sitting across from some rando or new kid or younger sibling or mean teacher or annoying neighbor or whoever. They look up and they realize that they're sitting across the table from Jesus. You can read this story in Luke 24, 13 to 35. It's all there. It's called The Road to Emmaus. These travelers, they didn't grow weary in doing good. They didn't give up. They invited this person in. And it was everything that they had high hopes for. It was a harvest of blessing. And Jesus, he actually makes this point totally clear in Matthew 25. He tells us that whatever we do for people who like seem like the least to us or seem strange to us, we do it for him. And I think especially when we love people who don't yet look like Jesus to us, like we haven't yet realized that they look like Jesus, when we do that, we're learning to love the way that Jesus loves us with that agape love that doesn't expect anything in return, that unstoppable love that comes from who God is and how he loves us and what we have to give. How has God loved you? Who is your neighbor? And what do you have to give? You know, she's not so bad once you get to know her and she's yeah. not destroying everything that you love. Yeah, well, and I can take the mat off the front porch. You know what? I think you should keep it. Really? Yeah, I want all of our Loop neighbors to know that they are welcome anytime. Well, it could give us an opportunity to do some good in the neighborhood. Unless Danica destroys it all. Okay, let her try, but you and I will help rebuild it. Every opportunity to do good. Every opportunity to do good. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride. Oh, goodness. 99? 100, 100 points! 102! Oh, man, you beat me. Oh, yes. Well, I do have a gold medal in table darts. That's right. Yes. You know, Jamie actually has a master's degree in table darts. Yes, and the gold medal. Follow your dreams. <laughs>